Oh my god. Welcome to Fjorda. Chef's kiss. What is up guys? Welcome back. Today we're going to be playing with a bunch of new makeup. Some of it is new new, some of it is new to me, but it is all exciting. Stuff that I have grown to love just in the short time that I have had it, and some stuff that forces me outside of my comfort zone, which is something that I get requested a lot. In this case, we're going to be playing with, in, you know, live action here, the blue-purple kind of things that you guys saw in my best of the best mid-year roundup. I was blown away by the reaction to that makeup look. People were like, this is knockout gorgeous. And I was like, I feel so self-conscious. Like, I feel like this is a dud. So we're going to be playing with that. I've got some new stuff from Thrive Cosmetics. They came out with blue, like icy shades in their brilliant eye brighteners. But the actual blue purple that I was referring to is from Urban Decay. They sent me some stuff. I have some new blushes. I mean, these are the ones that are new to me. From Patrick Top. They're so overwhelming, I can't seem to hold them. Um, they are so beautiful. These are not new by any means, but they sent them to me and they are all gorgeous. I can't stop putting all of them on my face at one time. I also have the new Bite lipsticks. I'm not even sure when they come out, but they've been swatching them online and stuff like that. Like, this is not a secret. They finally reformulated their matte lip that everybody loves. I have tomato, chai, and sugar buns. And we will see, it's not tomato, it's hot tomato. I'll swatch all of them for you and then we'll decide which one goes with this look. And um, if you see me talking kind of funny, it's because I have one of these. I guess I like ate a tortilla chip wrong or something and cut the side of my mouth and it hurts. Anyway, I'm gonna move you all in. We, oh, I also have new foundation and uh, concealer from Tarte. Yeah. Who, right? I haven't talked about Tarte in a really long time. I don't know, it appealed to me when I was making orders from Sephora, a Sephora, if you will. Why has no one ever said that before? Seems like a missed opportunity. Let's go ahead and jump in. We're going to start, I got the sample size. I appreciate this, but I wish they did the sample size in every shade, but they did happen to have my shade. Wow, that's pretty overblown khaki. But um, anyway, this is the Tarte They've just rebranded instead of Rainforest of the Sea, I think they're just calling it C, you know, S-E-A. And it seems to be their Clean at Sephora brand. And it is the Hydroflex Serum Foundation. And I have it in the shade 12N Fair Neutral. And it is an interesting little formula because it's very, very watery and it does not build, don't try it. <laughs> I got all those brushes in the mail from BK Beauty, and they also sent me a really great makeup sponge. I don't know if I've ever kicked a makeup sponge out of bed, but I like the shape of this one, and so I might be using that for the concealer. But like, this is even more temperamental, or maybe, I guess, the same level of temperamental that I see people have with the Fenty Eavesdrop. That's how this is for me, if you try to layer it. That first layer, Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. You know, you can use something to press it out so that it doesn't end up streaky in certain spots. You know, if you have just put your sunscreen on or something like that. Very low coverage, very pretty, does have like a nourishing feeling to it, but it's not dewy, which is phenomenal. It's very, very pretty, very, very pretty. Great kind of like camouflage level, but it is not a flexible, didn't they call it Hydroflex? Maybe because it flexes with your face, but in terms of flexibility of coverage, no. I tried to build it and it freaked out. I'm not gonna do that. But luckily, the concealer is pretty darn good in terms of coverage, so I don't need it to build. Ow, this thing on my mouth <laughs> hurts so much. This I got in the shade AT5 Porcelain Sand. I kind of like this packaging. It's like, I don't know, I like the inner and outer tube thing. Doo -dee -doo -doo. I also think I did a pretty good job shade matching myself here. I like this concealer. I've only used it twice before filming, but I like it. It is a lot like the Thrive in the sense that it's a, like a medium coverage. It's kind of like, you know, Orcosis. I feel like that's becoming a very popular formula type. Yep. Yep. Where it just blends like a dream. You know, it just kind of goes away in the most beautiful way. You don't end up with the textural difference, even being a little bit lighter than my skin tone. And it's important for me at least to kind of point out the fact that the reason my skin looks darker than it is is because I have so much pigmentation. Underneath all the freckles, 
this is my actual skin tone, you know? And so it's like, I would rather match that and then bring it up with bronzer than try and match some in between my natural skin tone and my freckle color type shade. But it blends so nicely. The agreeability here is wonderful. And the fact that they call it a hydra sealer, it's kind of like, you know, how I describe the Thrive. It's just so hydrating. And that's what I need underneath my eyes. I need that hydration because that just means that yes, it's gonna go on really nicely, but over the day, it's going to keep it from kind of cracking and uh, you know, exposing you. I haven't mentioned it, but like where in the heck did I get this bruise from? It's been in my last few videos and I really thought that it was gonna go away sooner, but like who gets a bruise right there? Maybe my baby did that to me. I'm not sure, but like, even if I crash trying to do something inadvisable in yoga, like that's a weird spot to have a bruise. I don't know. <sighs> I actually also picked up the Danessa Myricks. This is her light one of her, oh my God, that's so tiny. This is, it doesn't say the name of it. That's a strange oversight, Danessa Myricks. It's our cream bronzer. And I really, really like the component. I like how it just has this nice little subtle button and that's how it opens. I got the fairest shade and it's a little bit green for me and I was afraid that it was going to be and it is and it's fine. You know, I'm just going to go with it, but it's not ideal. It's not ideal. You see, just a little bit ye yellow green, which is kind of what happens. I feel like there's a fork in the road, right? When it comes to formulating shades for very, very fair skin tones. You can either go a little bit more pink or you can go a little bit more green, right? And I'm sure that the next one that might be a little bit deeper probably goes a little bit more pink, but it's fine. It just kind of looks a little bit more bronzery than contoury for me. And I, I think that that's kind of what I'm coming up on with the Makeup by Mario stuff too, because I've had a chance to try it. I got some powder bronzer and blush and I also got his cream complexion sticks. It's kind of funny. I can't help but sort of group different brands together by their commonalities. And for me, because it is just a male makeup artist owned brand that, you know, focuses on the kind of aesthetic that it does and has celebrity clientele and kind of emerged, you know, not quite at the same time, but around the same time. I can't help but kind of compare it in my brain to Patrick Ta. And for that reason, like Makeup by Mario always just kind of seems like it's good, but it's not Patrick Ta, you know? Anyway, Patrick Ta, let's do this. So I'm, I'm, I'd love to say I'm not gonna be using his bronzer and contour duo today, but that would probably be a lie. Um, we'll see when we get there, but I have so many beautiful blushes from him that that's what we're going to start with. So I will go ahead and swatch the two of the regular ones that they sent because they have the regular blushes that are in these pans and then they have the doubles that are the powder and the cream. So we have, she's passionate and she's adorable, very beautifully sheer. And that's what I have said about these blushes before because I have, she's confident. I don't know, it's somewhere. Um, but uh, I originally bought a shade of this that is kind of a deep, I don't know, it's like a terracotta plum kind of color. And I loved that even though it was such a deep tone, it had a really nice translucence to it where I felt like I wasn't getting myself in too deep. It watercolored really beautifully. And so do these, they're kind of, on par in that sense with the Pat McGrath blushes, the way that they just watercolor and they just, you kind of can't find a logical stopping point because it, you can always justify putting a little bit more on, but it doesn't have that like wild, finely milled silkiness that the Pat McGrath does. So that's just kind of the, the difference. And then they also sent me, cause I already had She's That Girl. This was something where I put a poll up when these came out on my Instagram because I could not decide between any of the shades. And I ended up getting this one cause it won the poll by like a nose. And it is just this like beautiful true pink that leans slightly coral. But the two that they sent me, get real. This is, do we know her? and it is like straight up just apricot. Oh, 
Ugh. Pretty sure I've seen Kate the Great wear the crap out of this because it's just such an insanely good color story on her. I have this in the in the double, you know, with the uh, with the cream, and then if there has ever been, guys, an Instafjords shade. Look at this. I love the name of this one. Oh, she's different. I actually was just, you know, doom scrolling yesterday on Instagram and Patrick Ta had just used this on Megan Fox. I'll put the picture on the screen. Dynamite. Just so good. This is such like a sultry blush color and it's just such a natural flush, but like better than natural. So I think that this is where we're going to kind of be getting to today. I don't think we're gonna jump off with this. It's gonna be the final touch, but I'm gonna try and make this the local color. And I just love that they layer so beautifully because my freckles will probably still show through. So I'm going to start with She's Adorable. Oh, I didn't swatch it. I just got too excited. Do 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 do. What? What? That's a terrible swatch khaki. Oh my God. Welcome to Fiorida. Chef's kiss. Anyway, starting with She's Adorable. It's a very good sheer, slightly satin texture. And back in the day when I was using pretty much only powder products, I had what I called like a five product cheek routine that focused on mattes, like balancing mattes with shimmers because shimmers are going to be the ideal blending medium. They're always going to have a better blend on the skin and then they can bridge the gap with the mattes so that you don't end up looking, you know, strobier than you want to. This is perfect because it doesn't have a whole ton of shimmer to it. It is trying to hard pan, but that is because <laughs> my brushes need to be cleaned. Why don't I just use a new brush here from BK so that we're not up against that getting used to a new shape. But is that not just, oh, that color. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. It is, it's like Hannah Louise Poston, it's like a muddy peach. And I really, really dig a little mud in my peach. I don't wanna go too ham sandwich though because I wanna be able to like fit more blushes on my face. And these are sheerer, so I can use this a little bit more willy-nilly, if you will. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take something a little bit, ooh. I haven't used this one yet, look at that. I think it's huge and it's so pretty. So I'm going to take Do We Know Her, which is that orange I was talking about, you know, kind of coral. It's like the cream is a little bit more coral and the blush is a little bit more like dreamsicle. And I'm gonna just use that to feather meow, the edges kind of around here. And I do, I love that he has such an intelligence about color that not only does he kind of open my mind in terms of how to pair different formulas together because he puts a cream with a powder, but there's nuance to the difference between the cream and the powder shade. Like they are exactly the same family, but they're a little bit different from each other because of just the nature of the way that the formula wants to behave, it just works better. And that's another thing, like we'll talk about this again when I talk about Makeup by Mario. They're not bad formulas by any means, but I do feel like his colors, they're kind of like um, Lisa Eldridge in the sense where I'm like, yep, that's exactly what I expected, but I wanted to be surprised a little bit, you know? Okay. Do we do just powder or do we go for the cream? We'll start with powder. Mm, 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 mm. And the, I think I said this already, but the duos are more pigmented. Oh my God. Get real about that freaking blush color, guys. Ugh. I'm gonna save the creams until after I get done with everything else so that we can fine tune as we see fit. But like, do you see now why I can't stop putting them on my face? So. The next thing I wanna do is go underneath my eyes and kind of bridge that gap the same way that I've been doing that I love doing it this way with the Salt New York Beige Highlight. I love 
adding it right there because instead of adding coverage or trying to move product around, it just diffuses the way that the light hits the skin so that you don't have that harsh line. Da -da. I also, like I said, I would have been lying if I said I wasn't going to use the bronzer duo. I'm going to skip the bronzer for now and just go with the contour. And I'm going to use that BK Beauty brush that I like very much. Found it. This is the 106. They just sent these to me and I'm enjoying them a lot. See? It just kind of bridges that little gap right there between the bronzer and my hairline. Makes it look a little bit more natural. Like I've said in the past, anytime you are putting makeup on, I mean, if you're in the business of trying to create any kind of illusion, I guess, is driving extremes further and further away from each other. You're trying to accentuate the light points, you're trying to accentuate the deep points, and that means sometimes that when you do accentuate one, the other kind of disappears and so you have to come up to meet it. I mean, you don't have to do anything, but that's just my advice. All right, next, the coup de gras, if this was tantalizing to you in that video. So this again is the Urban Decay eyeshadow stick in the shade Chaos. <laughs> Nothing's ever been so on brand and so off brand at the same time because, you know, would I like to just keep my complexion and my eyes kind of all in the same happy skin tone adjacent family? Yes, I would, but today we're going to be challenging that notion and keeping it a little bit interesting. So this is the shade Chaos and, you know, I'm not an expert in their offering. But people have told me that there was an eyeliner in this and this is just now like it's a newly released formula of a color that they had had for a long time. So we're going in. This was actually mostly like my courage to even pull this out was encouraged by a creator that I follow on Instagram named Gabrielle Alvarez. I have such like a creator crush on her because she manages to make really colorful eye looks look really like chill. You know, I always feel like if I'm going to use something that's very unnaturally colored on my skin, that I'm going to look very, very made up. And it's just not the case. And she kind of has shown me, it's like you can have your freckles show through, you can do some like graphic eyeliner and stuff, and it still look very casual and everyday. And you don't feel like you have to like, dress your entire outfit and everything else up to the look. These are all just, you know, notions that have been living in my brain. No one ever told me those things, but you know, you have your eye trained for a certain thing. And I guess that's also why this looked so strange to me in that video and why I felt so uncomfortable in it is just because you get used to seeing yourself a certain way, you know? Let's use a fluffy brush here, a brand new one from BK. This is the 206. It's flat and fluffy. I'm just going to use that to blendy blendy. They're slightly waxy in texture. <sighs> I've said this before. I'll say it again. Urban Decay, you can criticize. You can. Anybody can. People often do criticize the choices that they make in terms of their releases, but their formulas are always spot on. And I feel like this is straight down the middle of what you would expect performance wise and wear time wise from a really beautiful, very saturated eye crayon. And it does want to dry down a little bit. I probably could have blended and then applied to the other eye kind of thing. Probably handled it a little bit more easily, but we can just put a little bit more on. And I'm okay with it being a little bit smudgy because even though it's matte, I'm going to go on top of this with some of those brilliant eye brighteners from Thrive and they're super shimmery. They will hide a world of sins. Okay, let's swatch these new shades from Thrive because this is such a departure for them. I'm so happy about this because they put out these very skin tone centric, nuanced browns, rose golds, golds, champagnes, whites, but we have not seen a blue or a silver from them so far. So this is, they came out with a mauve color too, and it's great, but it's like not this look, you know? So this is Betty and Betty is uh, this really lovely like Y2K blue. And it's, 
shimmery, but it's not glittery. But this shade right here is called Raquel, and whoever Raquel is it must be a legendary human being because this color is so good. <laughs> it's silver with like, ugh, like an exciting amount of glitter to it. So you can actually see the textural differences between those two, like different finishes. So uh, Betty is a color that happens to have some satin shimmer to it. And then Raquel is like this glowing silver color. And I'm gonna use both of them. So I'm gonna go with Betty, right? It's Betty, right? Yeah, um, right here. And even though it's not glittery, like she still brings a party. I am not meaning to talk down on Betty. She is still incredible, but the silver is like, I don't know, it's like magic. I'm gonna take that same brush and just sort of blur the edges. These blend like a dream. They always have. Like I said, they will hide a world of sins and they layer really beautifully too. I love the actual impact of these because some of the previous releases I feel like have been so sheer that they're super duper wearable, but they're not very easy to get like a whole lot of punch out of. And I feel like these are just sugar in the veins. <laughs> they are really just like not backing away from what they are. It's not like, oh, it's gonna be a sheer wash of blue. It's like, girl, that's blue, okay? And then we have this lovely silver. Are you guys kidding me? Put it on both eyes, yeah. Ooh, mm-hmm. It's kind of funny, because it's like, this isn't everybody's thing. And had they not sent these to me, I am not sure that I would have chosen them as my thing necessarily. But A, I'm super glad that, you know, I can kind of make them my thing, but there are also just a handful of people, like a very, very strong contingent of people watching this right now going, hell yes. <laughs> That's my thing, like that's my jam. I'm so lightly just tapping because I don't really wanna lose the saturation on that silver. And then using whatever's left on the brush to kind of blend it up just a touch. And then I'm gonna use those two underneath my eye as well. This is going to be like I said, kind of Y2K looking. I'm gonna do a little bit of the silver out here too. I like the way that that looks to sort of highlight that area. You still end up with the local color being that royal blue from Chaos, but you just end up with like the light hitting it in a really nice way. And that texture will help blend because that matte crayon is a little tougher to blend than these. And then what I actually really like doing because it sort of, again, drives the extremes further away from each other in a way that continues to build the illusion as I go in with Estrella because Estrella, that actually needs to be blended more. Estrella is a previous release that I love because it is such a pearl white, like such a really, really pure white. It's one of the only colors that I can wear that actually gives me an inner corner highlight and isn't darker than my skin. And now that I've done this, I can use like blush to fill in and make things look more, in, again, intentional. And it won't really look like blush, so. Mm, something really, really subtle. Yeah, we're gonna use She's Adorable again because it's got that satin to it, so it's gonna blend really beautifully. And use that kind of all the way around. It's almost undetectable as makeup, it's just kind of like a nice, healthy looking shadow. Y'all, if I can do it, you can do it, okay? <laughs> that was like pretty stinking easy, <laughs> okay? Now I am going to do a little bit of brow, liner, mascara, things that do not need to be watched in real time, so I will zoom through all of that real quick. at 
like this and I'm thinking, okay, if we wanted to add more blush, where would we add it? I'm wondering if that's too much, but if it is, we can always like back off from it. The main thing is I just want a little bit of a cream finish and I'll just do it like right there. So this is, do we know her? A little bit of a little bit of the cream of this. I haven't even used this cream. Holy crap! Boop 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 boop. boop. This is oh, she's different. I'm sorry, I can't help but like say it in like a funny voice because there are quotes. It's not like that. Just the name of you know. It's not like lilac. It's like oh, she's different. And I do want to put just a little bit of oh, she's different right in my crease. And Urban Decay did send over like a single eyeshadow that is a really lovely lavender shade. They also sent over a really cool um, like neon green <laughs> eyeliner. They're all really, really awesome, but like cramming them all on my face at once isn't really my jam. Okay, I think my eye, my mascara might be dry. Something that I've fallen in love with, guys, and it took me so long to come around to this, but the I finally bought the gigantic size of the Tower 28 SOS spray, but I wanna make sure that my mascara is dry before I do that. I mean, it heals my skin, it sets my makeup. I can't explain it because it doesn't have any glycerin in it, but it makes my skin really pretty and dewy. <sighs> All right. Let's commence with some lips. So thank you to Bite Beauty for sending me the new reformulations. They sent me three shades that honestly could not be more lovely. I can wear all of them. And I think that that is really owed to the formula because if this was uh, a different formula, these shades might not work so well for me. We have Sugar Mom and um, this is Chai and this is Hot Tomato. I think that Sugar Buns is going to give me the right look here because it's like a perfect cool toned like mauvey dirty lavender and if you're unfamiliar with this formula i am unfamiliar with the previous version of this formula but it's like a much more pigmented version of like the glossier generation g it's probably what i would imagine the new violette ones are like it's just this really, really lightweight silicone -y matte lip. And it does something really, really beautiful and effortless and smudgy on the lips. It's Again, it's another thing where it's like in other formulas, I'm not sure that I could have worn this. Same with the blue, you know? Um, but because the formula is what it is, I feel like it helps me pull off messy. I can't just stop there. They sent me the rest of the Patrick Ta lip glosses. This is She's Expensive. Mmm. I can't remember whether the other one is minty, but this one's minty. It's lovely. It's like, what kind of, it, sm it tastes, smells, doesn't taste, smells like after dinner mints. You know, there's a lot of different mints in the world, but like, mm, mm. And I have, you know, muddied up the applicator because I keep putting it over lipstick, but um, it's just a really, really pretty kind of clear with champagne. Lots and lots of very dense, tiny glitter in it. All right, I'm gonna move you guys out and we will recap on all these products and my thoughts on them. Smells like pool water, has absolutely no business doing the magic that it does, and yet here we are, I love it. So this is the final vibe today, guys. Again, right outside my comfort zone, and you can probably sense my discomfort right now. It just, I'm kind of like compulsively checking myself because it just doesn't look like I'm used to seeing myself but I can objectively admit that that is a cool looking eye look. And I'm grateful that they sent them to me because in my capacity as a quote unquote influencer, it is my job to try things that are sometimes out of my comfort zone, but when something's out of your comfort zone, you don't necessarily know what to buy. So it's like nice that, you know, this kind of fell into my lap in that sense. So absolutely beautiful. Let's uh, go one by one here. So like I said, big takeaway here for the Hydroflex Tarte C whatever, pretty big shade range on this, but not in the minis. I wish that they would put the minis out in all the shades. And um, I think it's really nice. I like the finish of it. It kind of reminds me of like the Chantecaille Future Skin because it has that kind of like mattified sort of thing, somewhere between that and the Fenty because it does have a touch more coverage. But 
do not try to layer this. That's not what it wants to do, at least in my experience. It goes one layer and then that is it. If you want to get more coverage out of it, I do think that, you know, obviously these two products are going to very much agree with one another and you can get a good amount of coverage from the Hydro Sealer. I like this a lot, right up there formula-wise with the Thrive, the Typology, the Kosas in the sense that it's very, very moisturizing and hydrating, but it also, you know, holds its ground over the day. So again, I got that in the shade 8S. Did I say 85 earlier? It's because I can't see very well. 8S porcelain sand. Now, you know, I, I really like make no secret of this. So there's almost no reason for me to like, you know, gush more extensively. But I think that the main takeaway here for the Patrick Todd blushes is if you're going for a more saturated look, you want something that is like a lot punchier, go for the duos. And then if you want something that's very like sheer and watercolory, go for the monochrome moment, just the, you know, the single pans. This is just a much more sheer formula. And I also really just, I've told you guys this before, but I love the Patrick Ta sort of it forces our hand a little bit to be like, hey, guess what? All of those preconceived notions that you were taught X many years ago that you can't mix powders and creams, I'm here to buck that and it's gonna blow your mind. And it does. And it has completely changed the way that I think about putting my makeup on. Also, his shades are bonkers. They're amazing. Bonkers in a good way. They are bangers. They have the most incredible nuance. He, he puts muddiness in the right colors. So like you see the difference when you put those two next to each other. This is just so much more subtle. And then you look at something like the Fjord's shade of it all, like really? No one, no one puts a powder blush out in that color. It's so incredibly beautiful. And I didn't swatch this. I just applied it to my face, but like, look at how beautifully sheer and almost a texture, almost mostly a texture, these creams are. And that's why I love it so much is because anybody can wear these colors, you guys. There's no white behind them. They're like Salt New York in that sense, where they are just a really gorgeous wash of pure pigmented color, but they don't have that opacity to them that A is going to give you more coverage because that's what drives me kind of crazy is when I get done and I feel like my blush is like, altered the cup, made me look like I'm more made up versus just applying color. So it's like a really beautiful wash, but also that means that it's not going to go ashy on anybody's skin tone. And I just feel like he has a major aptitude uh, that comes from doing makeup on a lot of different skin tones that he really brings back to the game. I really, really dig these. And actually, where is that green one? I wanted to swatch that for you guys because it's, such a smooth pencil and they do actually wear all day. Okay, then. So this is the shade Freak. If Gabrielle Alvarez does not already own that shade, she needs to. Why did I swatch it right there? That doesn't even make sense. We'll do it right here. Spatial reasoning. <laughs> and then this is Psychedelic Sister. There we go. That green, let me tell you, it glows. It glows. You put that on like the inner corner and it, you've got a look. It could be a totally neutral look other than that. And then you put that on the inner corner and it is fire. It is so good. So that's those. And I do really, really dig this crayon. It has blendability, staying power. I love the nuance of the shade that it has a little bit of like a cornflower blue thing underneath it, but also seems to go with my skin. Like it doesn't make my eyes glow demon red, which is a thing that happens to me a lot. So maybe it's that it's more cool toned. Maybe I'm just getting used to seeing these things on myself a little bit more, but oh my gosh, the combo. This is just such, such an epic little love affair. These three things. You guys can you guys can see it. And you guys saw how much fun I had putting it on. There is something to be said for something being fun and easy. When you are doing something that's a little bit scary, like putting blue directly on your eyeballs, for something to make that easier for you. And you guys have watched me toil and struggle with other things in the past and, you know, get in over my head with colors like this. And this is just so much easier to control all of them. So love that, love that journey for me. You guys know I'm not like a huge lip color person, but I actually have been wearing these quite a bit. I put a photo up of me on Instagram wearing chai and I had really, really pounded on, um, oh, she's different guys. Oh my God. If you have trouble wearing red and trying to like achieve that effortless French girl thing, 
maybe go in the berry direction and it'll kind of read red if it's very tonal on your skin. Tonal meaning your face is all kind of in the same family. It can trick the eye into seeming like it's, you know, almost a true red because that's what it did on me. And they, these are not red at all, but they are so similar. Like if you're going for that tonal look, this is such an epic combo. So, oh, she's different and chai in the new Bite Beauty. And you guys knew that I loved these lip glosses from Patrick Ta. I have loved them for a long time. I have, she's an influencer and I use it all the time. I use it in videos and everything like that because it's a phenomenal, lightweight, non-sticky kind of formula. It's not a liquid lip balm formula, but it's not sticky. And it has the right amount of glitter in it. I would compare it most closely to the Thrive, their lip topper, but their lip topper, I can feel the glitter in it. I can feel the glitter in this one too. Yeah, they're just remarkably similar. And I think that that's, that's the whole thing today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today, guys. I love you so much and I will see you in the next one. Oh, and thank you to all these brands for sending me this stuff.